What's up guys, thanks for coming to Game in Canada with me. As you can see here, we've received an early Christmas present from the Luma team in the form of a new custom firmware release. This new version of Luma custom firmware is a jump from 8.1.1 up to 9.0. If you do decide to try out this new release, one thing to be noted is Boot NTR Selector will require you to update to the newest version which is now compatible with Luma 9.0. Also, if you're still on ARM9 loader hacks or your boot 9 strap is lower than version 1.3, you'll want to follow the links in the description for either upgrading ARM9 loader hacks to boot 9 strap or updating boot 9 strap. If you're already on Luma 8.1.1, you're probably good to go and just run Luma Updater and grab the latest stable release. Remember, if you're using the homebrew version of Luma Updater, you're going to have to patch ARM9 access in Luma Configuration. To access Luma Configuration, hold the select button while you're turning on your device. I'm going to get more into the technical side of things in a second, but first, let's roll that intro. We're over here on Aurora Writes GitHub, and this is the release for Luma 9.0. If you wanted, you could go ahead and download this 7-zip folder, extract it, and just replace the boot.firm on the root of your SD card with this one, and you would basically be on Luma 9.0. I'm going to be showing you how I use Luma Updater from Homebrew to update to the latest version as I'm already on Luma 8.1.1 and I have Boot 9 Strap 1.3, which means I'm a perfect candidate for just using Luma Updater. Here's our holiday gift to you. Use open source re-implementation of SM and PXI firm modules, fixed breakpoint and Rosalina debugger, added RAM editor, dumper feature, Rosalina, Rosalina now clean, reboots the console and object selected, fixed run release of screenshots, blah 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 blah, something something, stub to the title, allow blah 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 blah, something something, arm 9 is something something, blah blah, throw an error when the blah 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 blah, throw boot to blah blah, and uh, uh blah blah, a um, blah blah, fat FS updated, blah blah. Uh, screenshots are now sorted by date and time using get time, removing the counting delay if a user has a lot of screenshots. Whew, now that we're through that and you totally understood everything, here's a post over on Reddit by Yuki Shiroko, and it breaks it down for the noobs like me that don't quite understand any of this technical mumbo jumbo. Rosalina reboot option now cleanly restarts a console instead of a method that was unclean slash hacky and could cause problems. Now I had problems using the reboot feature before. When I was streaming with NTR I often have to restart my console so I use the reboot feature to do it quickly. Although I was noticing more and more that when I restarted it NTR wouldn't properly engage or wouldn't properly reset itself so the next time I launched it it still wouldn't connect to my computer. I ended up having to turn it off an old fashioned way with the button and then turning it back on and this would fix my problems. So hopefully maybe now the reboot option is more of a complete turning off of the console and booting back up. Certain Game Boy slash Game Boy Color Virtual Console titles couldn't have screenshots taken by Rosalina without distorted colors and version 9.0 fixes that. Now this is another thing that I actually noticed recently. When I was making my injecting color into your Pokemon Virtual Console game video, I was trying to take screenshots of me playing and they came out insanely distorted. I had to end up photoshopping a bunch of screenshots from the internet to make them work for my video. Is title allowed is now stubbed, so any titles that Nintendo blocks can still be played on a Luma 3DS custom firmware device. So this is title allowed being stubbed means that we can now use older homebrew versions of things such as Ironfall or Flipnote Studio hacks that require you to update to a newer version normally to use. So I guess this will remove a lot of the update nags in case you're trying to do some videos where you're using an older exploit and you're still maybe on version 11.6 or something of that nature. The good example of this is Flipnote Studio on 11.6 requires you to update whereas on 11.5 you can still use the older version. So now I'm assuming on 11.6 you'd be able to run the 11.5 version of Flipnote Studio in case you wanted to make a hacks video about it. For the end user, this doesn't have a lot of use as we can all just inject homebrew into any app we want. But again, you know, you never know. You might be a content creator. Now for this next one, if you remember at the start of the video, I said you're going to have to patch ARM9 access if you're using the homebrew version of Luma Updater. Now on the older versions of Luma, there's a lot of homebrew apps such as FBI or 3DS Ident or even Luma Updater, as I just said, that require you to patch ARM9 access while you're using the homebrew version. When you update to Luma 9.0, the ARM9 access and the FS patches are going to automatically be enabled. So when you go and use homebrew versions of your apps such as FBI or 3DS Ident, you'll get full access right off the bat, and in the future you won't have to patch ARM9 access. 
for this next one. When you used to be in the Luma Chain Loader or the Luma Configuration menu and you closed your device, instead of it going into sleep mode, it would just sit there awake and use all your battery until it died. Now there's a failsafe in Luma 9.0 that if you do happen to close your device in one of those menus, then it will just go ahead and shut off and save your battery from dying. Now this excludes using an NTR boot cartridge to boot up your device for obvious reasons apparently. The Luma configuration menu will now tell you where you booted from, so where your firm is located that you're currently loading Luma off of, either off of your NAND, off your SD card, Firm 1, Firm 0, NTR boot cartridge, etc. The bottom one is the main one that I'm interested in, and it says many bugs concerning the exception handlers were fixed. Hmm, does this mean that I can do things without seeing crashes? Because that would just make me probably have the best Christmas ever. Let's go ahead and load up Luma Updater and get this started. I'm here in the homebrew launcher. I'm going to go ahead and launch Luma 3DS Updater. So I've got my ARM9 access patched and I'm here in Luma Updater. I'm going to go ahead and select Install Stable Version, which as you can see is version 9.0 from GitHub. I'm going to hit A on it. It's going to back up your old payload and then it's going to go ahead and install the new one. As you can see, the update is complete. In case something goes wrong, you can restore your old payload from the root of your SD card. It'll be named boot.firm.back. All you do is take off the .back and delete the other boot.firm. I'm going to hit start to reboot my console, and I'm going to be in Luma 9.0. You'll probably be greeted by the Luma 3DS 9.0 configuration menu. Now, really, you don't have to enable anything in here, but if you are on a new 3DS, you could go ahead and enable clock plus L2 just to give you full speed. In case you were already utilizing layered FS features within Luma, you could go ahead and enable game patching again. After you've done that, go ahead and hit start, and I'll meet you guys on the home menu. Last thing we need to do is update boot NTR. Now you can go ahead and download the 3DS X version and just replace the one on the SD card in your 3DS folder. And then you would have the new homebrew version of boot NTR selector. Now if you happen to use a CIA version of boot NTR selector, then you can go ahead and hold the X button on your 3DS and then hit A to launch into boot NTR selector. And it'll go ahead and download the newest update. Go ahead and let it install the new update and you'll be ready to go. Boot NTR will now work perfectly on your new Luma 9.0. So now that we have all of that installed, there's something I need to know. Is this going to crash while still doing the normal things that I usually do on my 3DS? One of those things being running NTR custom firmware to record gameplay. So I've enabled NTR custom firmware and I'm going to see if I get an exception occurred error when I turn off my device. It didn't, it didn't give me an error. Okay. All right. I love Luma 9.0 already. Well, guys, I hope you are now updated to the latest version of Luma 3DS custom firmware version 9.0, as well as have the accompanying boot NTR selector to go along with it. If you guys are still experiencing any of the crashes you were experiencing on Luma 8.1.1 or lower, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Please tell me which app you're experiencing the issue with and when it's happening. While you're down there, please slam the thumbs up, really helps out the channel. Hit the dislike in case you dislike the video, but please subscribe for more because I have tons more coming. We're probably going to hit 12,000 subscribers fairly shortly here as we just broke 11k a couple of days ago. Much love, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.